has simultaneously appeared as a chef contestant on Bravo's Top Chef and the Food Network Chef Hunter, where she won the competition. A veteran of Michelin star restaurant, Chef Naisha Arrington is celebrated as a who's who on the food scene, known for her imagination and embrace of traditions learned from her Southern dad and her Korean mom and grandmother, Naisha being touted as a trailblazer, reshaping how we look at food and fine cuisine. And now she's a mentor on Gordon Ramsay's hit show, Next Level Chef, in its second season. Take a look. I want the intensity hot in here. Oh me, I smell some amazing aromas coming off this station. I feel the love. You feel the ancestors. Yes, ma'am. you feeling, ma'am. It is so fascinating to me that the chicken oysters made it all the way down to the basement. I am very excited about that. What's your vision? Make like a boyogi sao, which is like a stewed chicken. Yum. It's very How are we developing flavor? Rico. I threw in some paprika, some mm. garlic powder, onion powder, amor. some cumin, oregano, la cantidad que te diga tu corazón mi amor. Allá. Aya. <laughs> Please welcome Chef Naisha Arrington to the dance Oh my gosh. I mean, ma'am, they put your show after the Super Bowl. Girl, That's a big deal. 15 and a half million viewers. Oh my God. <laughs> Cannot believe it. I mean, so taking people through some of your training and, and where you come from, you and Gordon both work for the chef who had the record most Michelin stars in the world, Joel Robochon. So your training has come from like iconic status. Like iconic, iconic. He's dubbed the chef of the century. Wow. Yeah. The late and great Joel Robochon. Absolutely. And so you trained by the chef of the century, you become a visionary chef of a lifetime incomparable to anybody. I mean, you, you, it's, it's phenomenal what you've accomplished as a black woman in fine Girl. dining. Yeah. I, I, I don't even want to get emotional. It's hard. It, it, it's, it's been quite the journey. Um, and it is uh, a true honor to be able to share that knowledge and the passion with the next generation. I love it. I love it. And, and speaking of generational your grandmother yes. played a big part in everything that you are and you do <laughs> look at you so cute my mom and my grandmother absolutely my grandfather uh born and raised in los angeles fought in the korean war met my grandmother yeah. brought her back to la had my mom and her brothers like I incredible it. it's a beautiful story yeah. so you're making for us braised short ribs and sweet potato grits Woo! Y'all hear that in the back? Man! <laughs> oh, my mouth is watering. <laughs> it's a combination of your French kitchen professional background and the Asian and soul food you grew up with. Exactly. Okay? Absolutely. All right, so we've got our short ribs already going here. Correct. So what we've done is just start to caramelize and brown these short ribs. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. we can take these out of the pan. They have, have nice color. Here. They're beautiful. And set them aside, right? Cut. Mm -hmm. Color is flavor, right? So we want to make sure pan is hot and getting nice sear on them. So I'm going to take the short rib out now. Okay. And so what I want to do is save all that beautiful fat mm -hmm. inside, and then we roast our beautiful aromatics, right? So today I'm using some scallions, ginger, uh, lemongrass. Oh my god! Right? Because it's about all the, the things I love. Right. Everything I love. So it's all about that layering process, okay. exactly. One of the most important steps about braising is caramelizing the tomato paste. This is a step not to be missed, right? This is gonna really add some beautiful depth of flavor. And how do we do that? Just by browning? Literally, okay. exactly. So after the vegetables start to caramelize, uh -huh. you go in and you add your tomato paste and you wanna let that cook. Take a minute and let that cook. And how you'll know it's done is the oil will start to turn a little bit orangey. Oh, that's a great tip, yep. okay. Perfect. So the next layer of flavor is a little bit of what is called uh, gochujang, right? Uh -huh. So this is popular in Asian. I love it. I, I have it all the time in different recipes. Amazing. Fantastic. So it's like that kind of fermented chili paste. Mm -hmm. Not too spicy, a little sweet, um, but it adds a nice sort of glutinous uh, mm -hmm. texture to the sauce. And so you allow that to sort of caramelize down and you can sort of smell those aromatics coming off already. I love right? it. And again, layering those flavors, right? So as that starts to caramelize, mm -hmm. 
Uh, now we want to go in with the sort of third installment of flavor and, and get all those beautiful brown bits up that we have achieved uh -huh. by browning the meat, right? So as that cooks out, now we're adding red wine. This is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We have some amazing off-duty Delta flight attendants with us. Love it. Shouting out the red wine. They are off-duty. Thank you very much. Thank you, Delta. So that's going to come up to a little simmer. And then I add the beef stock, right? And this is now where the magic is starting to happen, okay. right? Okay. Absolutely. So uh, a little bit of sesame seed oil, mm. right? a little bit of fish sauce, and to round out our sort of flavor journey, um, I like to use and be sustainable and intentional with mm. caring for our products that Mother Nature so kindly gives to us, yeah. right? Um, it's a bit of orange zest, which is that beautiful um, sort of essential oils around, around the orange, the orange yeah. right? And then also the inside by juicing it. So both of those go in. Oh, that's beautiful. Right? And then I actually just use a little bit of Asian pear that has some natural pectin. You know, this is my son's favorite fruit now? Really? He loved, they're so juicy, so I know what they would be adding to this recipe. Exactly. They they're are good. so juicy. They're crisp. They're crisp. This is beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. So that actually helps thicken the sauce as well. As oh, it really? Down. Exactly. Mm. Yep. And so as that cooks, now we're going to add the short rib back, back in. in. Exactly. I have that part here. Okay, beautiful. The amazing team. <laughs> Trying to make me look good. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> All done for me right here. Perfect. All right, so we bring it to a boil and then we simmer. Very important. For three and a half hours. Oh, bringing it to a boil. Very important. Yeah. And the reason is because we don't want the meat to sit in this sort of simmery liquid. We mm. want to give it a kick start by bringing up the entire temperature of the pot, then turning it down and allowing it to slow cook. Welcome back. We're with Chef Naisha Arrington. The short ribs have been simmering here. That's done. That's done. So as that's cooking, you know, you do your day, run yeah. your errands, do what you got to do. That's in the oven or on the stove. What we're going to serve this with uh -huh. and how I came about this dish is... Um, I've never heard of this until you. You created something new. Literally. I love it. <laughs> so what I did is, um, you know, sweet potatoes are so good for you. Yes. Rich in vitamin A, rich in vitamin C. Mm -hmm. So you literally just scoop the sweet potato out which adds natural creaminess to it oh. without adding a ton of butter. We're going to add a little bit of butter, but um, it kind of gets us there with, with adding nutrients, right? I think that's very important for culture to understand how we can also eat food as fuel, oh. right? So we scoop out a little bit of the sweet potato, and then we're going to mix this together. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous color. And a good amount of butter <laughs> goes into your camp grits without butter. You were tra trained by one of the best French chefs ever to exist. I believe you use butter, ma'am. I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not even ashamed. I do. I love me some butter. Me too. Life's meant to be enjoyed. Listen, life is meant to have butter on it. I agree. And so we have our beautiful grits here. Uh -huh. Yes. And once again, I'm looking at you because I don't know what I'm doing, and I love watching you work. It's like it's a painting. It, oh my gosh, you're speaking my language. No, it is a painting. It is. 100%. And I like to just make a little well right in the middle to get, capture all of that beautiful sauce. Mm. Right? So I make a little oh well my God. in the middle. And yep. then I just finish this with a little bit of sliced scallions. Oh, wow. Right? And just a touch of sesame seeds. Look, every time I try to reach for it, now it's done. It up, like, <laughs> look at that. Can you look at that? Wow. Oh. The aroma. The aroma, the color. Oh. <laughs> Listen. So far, everything I've tasted in this show, I've told you it's the most amazing thing. I told my father when I got into TV, I would never be one of those hosts that pretend something is good when it is not. This is better than good. It is fantastic. It is great. It is delicious. It is amazing. That would be my third bite. I'm here for it. And I'm here for the fourth. Thank you. <laughs> you oh, are amazing. My pleasure. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, thank, you. thank you. I love it. Chef 
Naisha Arrington is the real deal. And if you're hungry for more, Naisha, catch her on Next Level Chef, airing Thursdays on Fox. Check your local listings. One of the things I love about this show is you always experience something different. I've never had red grits in my life. Perfect. Guess what I'm grocery shopping for later today?